Hello and welcome back. Today's video is going to be about API Gateway Authorizers. These allow you to control access to your API. In the last video, we created a REST API using API Gateway. I would recommend you to watch that before continuing with this one as we are going to use the same underlying API. You can find the link of that in the description below. This is what we are going to build today. There are two types of authorizers. That is Lambda and Cognito Authorizer. In case of Lambda Authorizer, we are going to create a Lambda function and attach it to the API Gateway method. And for the Cognito Authorizer, we are going to create a user pool and use that to control the access. So both involve a series of steps. So let's get into the AWS console and start building this. Okay, so we are in the AWS console. So this is the API gateway resource that we created from our last session. And these are the associated methods that we created. And we are going to attach the authorizer to one of the methods that we created from our last session. And this is where your authorization will go in. So for that, first let's create the authorizer itself. So you have two options as we discussed, that is a Lambda and a Cognito option. So it's enough if you create just one of it based on your use case. But today I'm going to show both uh, just for demo purpose. So for our Lambda authorizer, the first thing we have to do is create the Lambda itself. So I'm heading to the Lambda console and I'm going to create a new function here. Uh, give the function a name. It can be anything. I'm going to name this as Lambda auth. And I'm going to use Python 3.8 as a runtime environment. And you can leave with a default execution rule. And the code for this Lambda authorizer is available in the GitHub repository. I will leave a link of that in the description. So this is a very simple uh, function. So it takes in the authorization token as an input, which is passed by the API gateway. And if it is one, two, three, four, then we are allowing the access. And if not, we are denying the access. So this is, this is done by returning the policy document as the response. So copy the code and paste it in the Lambda function and deploy the function. So once deployed, if you head back to the API Gateway console, you will find the Lambda function here. You can select that. And within the token, you have to choose a token name. So this token name is the header value that, have, that you have to pass while invoking the API And I'm going to select the caching. So the caching will store the authorization value for a particular period till the TTL expires. And as this is demo, I'm going to disable this uh, because if it is cached, then you will not be able to see the uh, changes immediately. And under authorization, uh, okay, the value is not present, so just refresh it. So at times there is a delay. Once refreshed, you will find the token authorizer, authorizer that we just created. Select the authorization here. And once uh, selected, you can deploy the API. So I'm just doing this for the get method. You can do the same changes for all the other methods as well. And once deployed, if you head back to the postman, we'll see that if we hit the API, you're getting unauthorized because we didn't mention anything in the headers. So now if you add the authorized authorization token in the header, you should be able to access the API. So let's try that. So in the headers, I'm adding the authorization token with a value of one, two, three, four, which is the value which we allowed. So as you can see, we are able to access it. And if we give a different value, then it should deny our access. There is an explicit deny. And if you don't pass the authorization at all, then even then it should uh, be unauthorized. 
and the only place where it will work in our use case is if we give the authorization as 1234 because that is where we are allowing the access. So this is how you set up a Lambda authorizer. Okay, moving on to second method, which is Cognito authorizer. For that, first we have to create the user pool. So I'm heading to the Cognito console and going to start creating the user pool. So you have an option here to create a new user pool. So let's select that. And under authentication provider, you have two options, either to select the Cognito user pool as a provider type, or you can even go with a federated identity provider. For this, I'm going to select the Cognito user pool and email as a sign in option. And here you even have an option to change the password policy for the users who are signing up. And I'm going to disable MFA. And I'm pretty much going to go with the default values in most of the cases. And if you are interested to learn in detail about the user pool itself, I have a separate video for that. I'll leave a link of that in the description. Please check that out. And here I'm going to go with sending email with Cognito. And in the user pool name, you can choose your own user pool name. I'm going to call this as authorizer user pool. And I'm going to enable using Cognito hosted UI. If you're not using the default UI, you can set up your own UI as well. And once you enable the hosted UI, you will have an option to specify the domain Cognito domain. You can either use a, a Cognito owned domain or you can bring in your own custom domain. In this case, I'm going to use a Cognito uh, owned domain. I'm going to call this as Cognito Authorizer. And a create an, I'm going to create an app client as well. I'm going with the public client. Specify a name and generate a client secret, which can be used with your backend server related integrations. And in the callback, you can specify a URL for your callback once you sign in. I'm going to just call this as example.com. If you have your own hosted application, you can specify that URL here. And un under advanced setting, you will have options to change for the uh, token expiration time as well as the access token expiration time. I'm going to go with the default values. And within identity providers, I'm selecting just the Cognito user pool. And for the OAuth grant type, I'm selecting both authorization code grant as well as implicit grant. And here within the uh, ID Open ID Connect, let's go with the default scopes. And click on next. There is some problem. Okay, the problem is you can't have Cognito in the domain name. So I'm going to call this something else. Uh, let's try something else. Authorizer123. Okay, that's available. If it's already taken or used by anyone else, we, we can't reuse the domain name as well. All right, let's review all the options that we just selected and create the user pool. You can come back and edit these options at any time as well. There are few variables that you can't edit, but most of them are editable. Once created, let's select the user pool and have a quick look. So the main thing is app integration. So that is what we are going to use for the authorization. So you can see the Cognito domain here. And in addition to the OAuth scopes that we defined, that is, that was email and open ID connect, you can even specify custom scopes. For that, let's just try creating one custom scope. Uh, for that, you have to first create the resource server. So within the resource server, you have to specify the uh, resource server name. This is just a friendly name. I'm going to call this as books API and the resource server identifier. This has to be a unique identifier. Generally, this will be the HTTPS endpoint that we are trying to authorize. So I'm going to copy the 
uh, HTTP as endpoint for our API gateway and use that as the resource server identifier. And in, within the custom scopes, I'm just going to create one custom scope, which I'm going to name as read. And then you can specify a description as well. So once you create a resource server, you can head back to the app client and add that to our integration as well. So edit the hosted UI and the customs in the custom scopes, you will find the new custom scope that we defined. Select that and save it. So with this, our user pool setup is done. And now let's go back to the authorizers and add the authorizer. So you have to uh, select Cognito this time as the authorizer type and the authorize Cognito user pool. And here you have to again choose a token for the head, uh, headers. So I'm selecting authorization and I'm creating the authorizer. So once we have that created, we have to associate it with the resource. So with the get method, we have our Lambda authorizer associated. So now I'm going to attach this to another get method where we are getting a specific resource. Okay, again, we don't have that in the drop zone. So let's just give it a quick refresh. And under method request under authorizer, authorization, you have to uh, select Cognito Authorizer and under OAuth scopes you have to give the scope names so in our case it is email and as well as our custom scope so our custom scope value was the API itself slash read which was a scope name all right so now we are all set final thing we have to do is deploy our API so I'm deploying it to the same stage And once deployed, now let's go and give it a test. So this was our books API, which is uh, authorized by our Lambda authorizer. And now the other API was uh, to get the specific resource, which is book slash one. Now it was giving us unauthorized as you saw. Now what we are going to do is generate the access token and try hitting it. So I have launched the hosted UI. And here, sign up. You, are, you can sign up by using an email. Once signed up, you will be landed to our callback URL. You can see that we have a code generated here. But actually, we are interested in the access token. So by default, you will get the code as the uh, in the output. So to generate a token, what you have to do is copy the hosted UI URL. So if you right click on the view hosted UI, you will be able to copy the link address and head to the con uh, head to the browser. And within the URL, you will find a place where it is uh, type as token, sorry, type as code, change that to token. And if you hit this URL, you should be able to get the access token. So we are changing the response type as token instead of code. Now, if you hit this, you will get the access token in the response back. So copy that URL. And if you paste that in some text editor, you will find that the URL has access token as well as ID token in the response. As you can see, this is the ID token and the previous one was the access token. So copy the access token and head to Postman. And here in the authorization, let's paste the access token. And with this, you should be able to access your API. As you can see, this works. And if you change the token even a little bit, if I remove some parts of the token, uh, this will not work. And after one hour, your to if your token expires, that will also give you an unauthorized exception. Okay, I want to show one last thing before closing today's session. So that is within the app integration, 
I'm going to try and use client credentials instead of authorization grant as the OAuth token. So if you see within the app integration, you have two different options. Uh, so let's try editing the OZ UI. And under this, within the OAuth 2 grant types, right now we selected authorization code grant and implicit grant as our uh, OAuth types. But instead of that, you can you have another option to select client credentials as the OAuth grants. So this was helpful if in case you want to use the access token in your server side applications. So the first one was used in the user token generation. But if you use a client credentials option, it will be useful for creating the access token in your server side applications. So let's see how to create the access token with this client credentials grant enabled. So once we do this, uh, also note that you will be able to select only one of the two. And once you enable it, you have this uh, token API, which is provided by AWS itself, which is nothing but your Cognito domain combined with OAuth2 slash token. It is a post endpoint. Uh, this requires a couple of headers to be set. So this is one of them. There's content type has to be URL encoded form. And then the authorization has to be basic, base64 encoded credentials. So that base64 encoded value is nothing but a combination of the client ID as well as the client secret. So uh, you have to copy the client ID and head to this base64 encode.org or any tool of your choice. Paste it there. And the same with the client secret. Separate those two values with a colon and encode it. So this is the base64 encoded value. And we are going to use this as the authorization header. So in the authorization header, you have to specify base basic space, the value that we just, just generated. And within the body, uh, it is form URL encoded. You have to give two values, that is grant type is client credentials, and then the scope is a custom scope. Once we send this, you will get the access token as well. So with this, this is not tied to any of the use specific user credentials. So this comes handy in case of your server side implementations where you're trying to generate the code within your application. And now if you try to use this in the authorization header, that should give, give you the access as well. As you can see, this works. So this is another way of using Cognito Authorizer with an API gateway. Hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. See you soon in the next video. Thank you.